Hello everyone and welcome to And Sleep, a whole youth social talk show series. My name is Tommy Likatezi. For this multi-part series, we discuss different lifestyles that can impact our sleep health. I have the pleasure of hosting Dr. Huma Sheikh. Today we're talking about headaches and sleep. Welcome Dr. Sheikh. Thank you, thank you for having me. So for this segment, we're gonna be speaking about headaches and sleep. So what type of headache patients do you see in your office? So mainly the, in my practice, I'm a headache specialist and the main group of patients that I see are young women because the large majority of patients have migraine and that tends to occur in women who are in their young to midlife. So I would say anywhere from 20 to 45 years of age. But outside of that, I also see patients with all types of different headaches and that can be young men or women, um, adolescents sometimes, all the way up to elderly men and women. So it can run the whole gamut. Why is it more prevalent in women uh, rather than men? Yeah, so migraine is um, a genetic disorder. And so if you have the predisposition, you can have migraine attacks with triggers. And for women, hormonal uh, imbalances can be a huge trigger. And I think that's one of the reasons that we think it's much more prevalent in women. Migraine specifically is three to four times more prevalent in women than men. Um, but there are headache disorders that are more common in men, like cluster headaches. Um, for overall, migraine is um, the biggest and the main um, headache disorder that I deal with. What type of comorbidities can you also see that will increase the likelihood of, of headaches and, and migraines? Sure. So especially in migraines, we have found that there are certain comorbidities that go with it. Um, Psychiatric issues like anxiety and depression are very common in migraine. Sleep issues can be very common in migraine. So things like sleep apnea, insomnia, parasomnias, all these things can contribute to bringing on migraine attacks, being triggers, but also causing migraine to go from becoming infrequent to much more frequent and chronic, what we would call chronic migraine. So now that you mentioned sleep, how does sleep affect headaches? Yeah, so sleep plays a really important role. I mean, we know overall that sleep is not a passive thing that we do at night or during the day. Um, during sleep, there's a lot of important bodily functions that happen. Um, it's a way for our brain to consolidate all the information that we receive during the day. Um, and it's also a way for our body to restore itself. So if you're not sleeping well, that can increase the likelihood of developing headaches or increase the frequency of migraines, for example. Um, certain sleep issues can bring on headaches in and of themselves. Like we know that people that have sleep apnea tend to wake up with headaches, and that's actually one sign that we look for in sleep apnea. Um, but then there's a relationship the other way around. If you're having headaches and you're having pain, it's hard to get good sleep. So it's a back and forth relationship between the two. So what other types of symptoms in your headache patients besides just the general migraine and headache do you look for to identify, hey, this patient might have a sleep disorder? Yeah, so, I mean, one thing that I do is ask patients, how do they feel like they, their sleep is? You know, do they feel refreshed in the morning? Do they have um, trouble falling asleep or staying asleep? How many times during the night are they waking up? Um, and there's certain apps that they can sometimes use um, to help them figure out if they are waking up a lot overnight. But then also, you know, we look for other things like, are they needing to take naps during the day? Are they falling asleep during usual activities? Um, sometimes it can be really helpful if a partner notices that they're snoring a lot. So snoring and easily falling asleep during the day, not feeling refreshed, are some of the big symptoms that we look for. So once you have identified a patient um, properly as uh, a sleep apnea patient, what do you do for those patients to treat them? Yeah, so we talk a lot about sleep hygiene, um, which is very important to getting good sleep. And the biggest thing is to try to get consistent, regular sleep. So trying to fall asleep and get up at the same time every day, even on weekends. Um, we tell patients to try to avoid caffeine and alcohol and nicotine after a certain time in the day. Um, and trying different things like relaxation methods or mindfulness um, can also be really helpful. If we're worried about specific issues like sleep apnea, um, or parasomnias or uh, insomnia that hasn't been identified specifically, then a sleep study would be the next step. Um, and now we have sleep studies that you can do at home. If we identify the specific sleep issue like insomnia, um, there are specific medications that we can try. Um, we know that the hypothalamus 
is involved in circadian rhythm and helping you identify when it's time to wake up and when it's time to go to sleep. And one of the um, hormones that is made is melatonin. So sometimes we can supplement patients and give them melatonin when it's you know, a few hours before bedtime to help them fall asleep and stay asleep. And then if we identify that sleep apnea, specifically obstructive sleep apnea is an issue, um, then there are different methods to treat that as well. Um, a CPAP machine is something that we use, but um, you know, there's also newer methods that have been identified by the American Academy of Sleep that um, work just as well. Some of the oral appliances um, that we have that can be really helpful, and um, sometimes patients prefer those much more than the CPAP in terms of ease to use, you can travel with it, um, it's easier if you have a partner, um, because sometimes the CPAP machines can be very noisy, um, you can sleep on your side with the oral appliances. So there are newer methods that are really, really helpful, um, especially for patients that might be hesitant about using a CPAP machine. All right, great. Thank you for, uh, for being on the show today. Thank you. Well, that completes this episode of Ann's Sleep, a whole you social talk show series with Dr. Huma Sheikh. We encourage you to explore the rest of the episodes and visit wholeyou.com to learn more about the latest in sleep breathing disorder treatment. The sleep professionals in this video series teamed up with Whole U to spread healthy sleep education across America and were paid for their appearances.